This video is the last in a sequence regarding placement of veneers on four maxillary anterior teeth. And the other videos in this sequence are in the video library of DentistryMasterClasses.com. Everything related to veneers, as well as many other comprehensive cases and uh, all the Dental Minute videos. So hit the blue link in the description below and subscribe to DentistryMasterClasses.com. So this is before and after. We've got four veneers on the maxillary anterior teeth, and these are Emax veneers. For years, I did porcelain veneers. I still like porcelain veneers. Just Emax are a little stronger, and they're very beautiful. Lithium desilicate, so before and after. So these are the provisionals. You can refer to that link. And these are the final restorations. Uh, this is, they're on a solid model. Refer to the link on how to make a perf, how to make perfect interproximal contacts. You do that on a solid model. And then this is a dime model. Anesthesia with our topical and then our hurricane spray gel and then blow it in with your uh, air syringe and then use a 30 gauge needle and sit in this plane and the patient will never feel a thing. They will love you for not feeling local anesthesia. So blow this in and then use just the tip of the 30 gauge needle with the bevel toward the tissue in the non-keratinized unattached gingiva right at the line between the attached and the unattached. And just this is sit in this plane which is pH neutral, so it's not acidic, so it doesn't sting like lidocaine or some of the other ones. So just tap the end of the syringe and just let the sitness go just ahead of the tip of the needle and the patient will never feel a thing. It's just the tip of the needle. All right, then we are going to remove the four provisional bisacrylate uh, restorations with this mosquito diamond and just cut between each of the provisional veneers. Then we're gonna torque them with this elevator. Now this is a Hugh Freedy, Freedy E38. And what I've done, I've taken it into the lab and cut it flat where it doesn't have an elevator surface. It's a flat surface and you can put this between uh, the restorations and just torque them and they'll pop right off. Now what I'm doing here, these had composite restorations on the teeth, and so I'm just polishing them just a little bit to be sure that the adhesive is completely off of those restorations because it'll stick to them. Now if I had decay here, see this restoration has come off. So I'm going to show you what I do in that situation. Also if I had interproximal decay, I would not remove the decay at the time of tooth preparation unless there was a lot of decay. I would wait till I'm seeding the veneers. I've got some other videos on how I do that. But what I would do at the seed appointment, I would go in and remove the decay and then place a highly filled resin and not cure it like I'm going to do here in just a minute to replace this part that's broken off. So then I'm just lightly reprepping that part and then polishing them with pumice and water and then wiping them with isopropyl alcohol just to clean everything off. Pum this is pumice and water and then isopropyl alcohol. Rinse that off. Yeah, then here's the isopropyl alcohol. Be sure you put two by twos in the mouth and then wipe it, clean everything off. And this is ice cold water. This is not warm water. This is ice cold water. And it, again, helps with hemostasis. Trying the veneers on. There should not be any interproximal adjustment because you've used a stone model to protect, to you've used a stone model to perfect the interproximal contacts. If you try to create ideal interproximal contacts on a dye model, they're not going to be ideal. You've got to use a stone model. Then I'm going to wipe these with isopropyl alcohol to clean anything off, dry them, 
And this is an easy way to transfer the veneers. This is rope, red rope wax on a cotton tip applicator. 38% phosphoric acid. Now I don't use silane. I don't use silane. You don't need it and it can be a source of contamination. So you don't need to use silane. I'm squirting this 38% phosphoric acid on the teeth. Now this part is, has come off I'm going to etch that too, and the phosphoric acid is an excellent hemostatic agent. So if you squirt that on any area, gingival areas that are bleeding, it's fantastic for hemostasis. But you be sure when you rinse it off, you rinse it off with ice cold water in a, a plastic water bottle with a large tip. Don't use your air water syringe or you'll cause bleeding. So you can etch enamel 45 seconds to a minute. You only etch dentin 15 seconds. So what if you've got dentin and enamel? Etch the enamel for 30 to 45 seconds, then squirt it on the dentin for the last 15 seconds. And then rinse this off with cold, ice cold water out of the water bottle. I'll usually only etch three to four teeth at a time. If I had 10 teeth, I'd etch three, then three, then four. So this is the ice cold water in the water bottle and you can see the fantastic hemostasis. It causes any bleeding to scab. Then we're placing primer adhesive. This is 3M on the teeth. The teeth, I want the teeth to be just a little bit damp, coated on there. Now before we've done this, we've turned off the lights in the operatory. The only light that's available is the actual optory light which is turned down to the feet of the patient. So it's just a glow. It's not an intense light. Otherwise it'll set this unfilled resin up. We'll place it. Now pay particular attention to this part where the composite has come out. It's life in a real practice. That happens. All right, so I'm going to blow the primer adhesive off onto this 2x2. Two two. Put another 2x2 two two up on the teeth so you don't get it all over the adjacent teeth and all over the gum tissue. And blow it onto that 2x2. Two two. Blow anything wiggly off. You don't want anything wiggling on the tooth because you want to get rid of the carrier for the primer, which is acetone or alcohol. And if you don't blow it off, that acetone and alcohol stays in the primer and it can weaken the bond strength. So blow any excess off. See the great hemostasis from the 38% phosphoric acid. Then place the primer adhesive on the two side of the veneers and blow the excess off. And you don't want anything wiggly on there. These are so strong. Watch my video in the Library of Dentistry Master Classes on how to make veneers as strong as natural teeth. When I cut a couple of these off one time, you have to cut every little tiny bit off. They do not fracture off. These become, these veneers truly become as strong as natural teeth if you'll use this technique. But you've got to use it specifically. Then blowing all the excess off. Then we've got this broken off part right here. So what I'm doing is placing some Filtex Supreme highly filled resin in that broken part. I'm not curing it, I'm just placing it in there. Now I would do this same thing if there was interproximal decay on the teeth. I would not remove the decay at the time of tooth preparation unless there was a lot of decay. I would prep the decay, remove the decay at the time of seeding and fill it with, if it was very large, fill it with filled highly filled resin. If it was small, I would fill it with flowable composite at the time of seeding. So then I'm placing the Relax veneer looting composite into the veneer, putting into place, cotton tip applicators, pressing it to place. And we put them all on at the same time. Don't put them one at a time. I've never understood why people would put them on one at a time because you're going to have to cure it, then you're going to have to remove the excess, you're going to, it's going to be bleeding. The veneers might swim just the tiniest little bit. If you put them on all at the same time, they line each other up. They orient the adjacent veneers. So I always put them all on at the same time. You'll love veneers if you put them all on at the same time. 
if you try to put them on individually, you will not like veneers because you're always having to deal with bleeding or what if, what if the veneer moved just a little bit so the adjacent veneers wouldn't seat? You'd hate your life. This way you know they seat precisely because you've tried them on, you know they're perfectly oriented, and they align each other. Keep the tip in the material as you seat it, cotton tip applicators, and I'll go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth to be sure that everything, that each of the veneers is completely seated. And I'll look at it from the facial and then I'll look at it from the incisal. Another critical part, critical part, is that you do not remove the excess looting composite until it, you have cured it initially. You don't cure it all the way, but you want to break it off. You don't want to wipe it off. Here's why. Between the veneer and the tooth, there's always a little tiny micro gap. If it's a well-made veneer, excellent impressions, that type of thing, you'll have about a 25 micron gap between the veneer and the tooth, or crown and the tooth. So if you wipe this excess looting composite off in the flowable state, it pulls some of that looting composite out of the micro gap. So you have a void in the micro gap. Bacteria will get into that micro gap. Remember, bacteria is only eight microns in diameter. When bacteria gets into that micro gap, you get irritated gingiva, sensitivity, and decay. So the best way to eliminate that is break it off once it init has initial cure. Don't ever wipe it off. That's with crowns or with veneers. Chip off the excess looting composite. So how do we set that and make that happen? See, I'm wiping this with a cotton ball and using a large occlusal mirror to be sure that these are in the correct arch alignment and that they're completely seated on the palatal. Then I'm gonna push them to place one more time so that that micro gap is completely filled. Then this is a very important part. This is how you get initial cure of the looting composite. With your, this is my Dimitron curing light I've had for many, many years. I start on the Paolo on the left side, the side away from me, and I go beep, mm, beep, stop. That's about a second. And then I'll come to the facial side Start on the le left side and go beep, beep, that's another second. These lights are so effective, that cures it initially so it's crunchy like crunchy snow. That long only. Then the facial, see how long was that? A little over a second. If you cure it too long, it'll be too hard and you'll have to cut it off. So you want to cure it just enough that it breaks off. And I'm using the back side of a scaler and that just pops right off the teeth. You don't want it to wipe off, you want it to break off. This changes everything as far as gingival health. If you'll do it this way, a few days after you've seated these veneers for the rest of that patient's life, the gingival tissue around these veneers will look exactly like the gingival tissue around unrestored teeth. It'll be perfect. Then you use wax floss and pop it between the teeth. Don't go crazy now because you haven't completely cured it. You've just got them set with that one second cure on the palatal and one second cure on the facial. Then this is the square end of an amalgam carver. You're going to use that to remove any uh, looting composite or adhesive from the facial surface of the veneers. It's very effective for that. Now we're going to come back and cure these with two curing lights on the facial and the palatal, 60 seconds each. That's way over cure. You probably don't need to cure them that much, but you can't over cure a composite. You could under cure it. So if I jump out of an airplane, I want two parachutes, not just one. One's going to work most of the time, but I'd rather have two. So in this case, why not over cure it? So we're going to give it 60 seconds on both the facial and the palatal surface. Then 
Once we've done that, we're going to come back with a large, fine chamfer diamond and remove the excess from the paddle. Light touch, lots of water. So you use this 12 fluted carbide burr in the interproximal and on the palatal of the veneers and also at the facial gingival margin of the veneers to just thin that margin and be sure that there's no excess looting composite there. I always use this carbide burr interproximally and on the palatal and on the facial in the polishing direction of the handpiece, not the cutting direction, to be sure there's no excess looting composite on the facial and that that margin is perfectly polished down to the tooth. Just light, light pressure, then check with the round end of that amalgam carver to be sure there's no edge, that everything's smooth, then floss again. Now they're completely cured, so you don't have to worry about flossing. Then check with articulating paper. Remember, you don't want, it's very important that the front teeth don't hit first. You want the contacts to be from cuspid to mesial of first molar. Watch the, the dentistry master classes video on occlusion. You don't want the anterior teeth, the four anterior teeth, the contact. You want them to be slightly out of occlusion, about one shim stock thickness, so it doesn't distalize the condyle adjusting and then using the Shofu rubber wheel to put a fine polish on the paddle of the veneers. Checking again with the round end of the amalgam carver. Be sure there's no edge. This is just checking the margins to be sure they're perfectly polished to the teeth. Then I'm taking this record for the night guard. And you can check that link in dentistrymasterclasses.com on how to fabricate a night guard. Very simple and effective technique. I call a night guard my investment, the patient's investment protector. Okay, this is the final video in this segment on fabrication of veneers for four maxillary anterior teeth. To watch the other videos on this procedure, hit the blue link in the description below and subscribe to DentistryMasterClasses.com and go to the organized video library and watch those procedures as well as many other veneer and restorative and surgical uh, procedures and technique videos. That's the Dental Minute and these techniques work and they work every time.